So let's consider how the activity varies with composition for the limiting case of a dilute solution. Okay, so a dilute solution is one where we either have mostly A with a little bit of B or mostly B with a little bit of A. So let's consider a case where we start with pure A. And we add a few atoms of B, basically. So we can say that this is a dilute solution of B in A. That's the thermodynamic lingo here. So a dilute solution of B. And B is what we call the solute in A. A is what we call the solvent. I have trouble remembering sometimes which of them is the solute and which of them is the solvent. The way I do this is that the word solvent has more letters than the word solute, and so the solvent is the one that has more stuff there. So this is a dilute solution of B in A. So if we consider basically how most of the a atoms are experiencing this solution, most of the A atoms don't notice that they are even in a solution, right? Because most of them aren't surrounding any B, right? So we can say that the solvent uh, basically acts like it did when it was pure. And these solvent atoms act as if they are in an ideal solution. And the definition of an ideal solution, we've encountered this before, is that the activity is equal to the composition. Okay, This is uh, experimentally observed to be the limiting case in all solutions. It just sort of depends on how far across the composition range this holds. And we can then write that uh, the limit as xA approaches 1 that the activity is equal to the composition. Okay, So the key here, though, is that this is the limit as x goes to 1, that this behaves as an ideal solution. And this expression here is what is known as Raoult's law. Okay, So a synonym for saying that something is behaving like it is an ideal solution is actually to call it Raoultian. We will sometimes say that. Okay, so if it's Raoultian, that's the same as saying that it's an ideal solution. So let's take a look at then a plot of activity. So let's say that we have an A B solution, and we are plotting the activity. Activity varies from 1 to 0. So we said that as xA goes to 1, then the activity is equal to the composition, which means that the plot of the activity will start out like this. right? Now, if it continued to be an ideal solution, then the plot of the activity would follow this line here. Okay. Now, let's consider sort of what happens to B in this dilute limit, right? So for the B atoms, what the B atoms are experiencing is that every B atom is completely surrounded by A atoms, right? Because we put in so few. So each B is completely surrounded by A. 
atoms. And when we're still in the dilute limit, each solute atom that I put in contributes basically the same amount of whatever it is to the system. So each B atom makes the same contribution. And so the properties of the solute atoms are proportional to their concentration. And we can say then, in the limit, as xb approaches 0, right, so as b is uh, being dilute, that the activity of b is equal to some constant times the composition of B. And this expression here is what's known as Henry's Law. And this here is the Henry's coefficient, or Henry's Law constant. So this looks a lot like our expression for activity, where we put in an activity coefficient. The difference here is that this is a constant uh, and not a function of composition. And this, would, this behavior would vary with each solute or solvent pair. So we had Raoult's law operating up here, right? So this is our Raoult's law behavior. In contrast, we can sort of sketch in this line. So Henry's Law tells us that in this composition range down here, that the activity is going to be a straight line, but not with slope 1, with slope given by the Henry's Law constant, okay? So that the activity might look something like this over this range. So in this case, this much, so maybe about 20%, is where Raoult's law and Henry's law would hold. Of activity might look something like this. By drawing in these guidelines, and these guidelines just basically show the slope 1, so that would be for the ideal solution. And so we can see that in the case of gold, that for about this composition range here, right, this is obeying Raoult's law. And that over that same region, that the activity of copper is essentially a straight line, right, with the slope given here by this green one. And if we consider this composition range over here, then we have, uh, let me change colors here. We have here sort of Raoult's law, right, for the copper, and then for the gold also, excuse the drawing, but if you looked at it without the drawing, also sort of a linear region down there. So. This is a, an example of a plot of the real activities, and we can see, if I clean this up for a minute, a real example of how Raoult's Law and Henry's Law can be applied for a dilute solution.